How much of the work is done in the edit? That's another question I'm curious about. Yeah. And how much do you uh, sort of anticipate that? Like when you're actually shooting, are you thinking of the final s story as it appears on screen? Or are you just collecting as a human, collecting little bits of story here and there? And in the edit is where most of the storytelling happens. I've developed this sort of mental paradigm for myself over the years um, that speaks to that. And, and I call it the three creations, right? And so when I'm doing a film, the first creation for me is, you know, my preconception or visualization of what the film is going to be before I shoot it, right? So I have this, this entire vision of, of what a film's gonna be. Um, and, and sometimes it can be pretty specific. Like I'll, I'll, I'll think through the scenes if I, if I know the locations and everything, and I'll have this idea of what I'm gonna create, right? And then I'm there filming, right? And always, without fail, reality is something altogether different than what I thought it would be. But it's still right? good to have the original idea. Yeah, yeah, but if I tried to hold to that original vision, right, and to create a film out of that idea, they'd be crap. All the films would be crap. So we, I have to adapt, I have to evolve my approach and then embrace what is actually occurring with the people who are actually doing it and then re-envision. So that re-envision is very active during the entire filming process. And so that's the second creation. That's the, the, the rethinking and re-visualizing based on what we're actually experiencing and seeing, what this film is going to be. And then I finish filming, right? And we're, we bring the hard drives back and we plug in the hard drives um, in the edit bay. And oftentimes, you know, because it's two of us filming most of the time, I haven't seen all the footage. Because in the field, it's all about just filming, right? Mm -hmm. And then just transferring the footage and getting on safely, you know, cloned to multiple drives. Mm -hmm. I don't have a chance to review everything. I can't do rushes like you do on a large feature. So because I'm filming half of it, I know what I've filmed, right? Mm -hmm. But I haven't seen everything the director of photography has filmed, right? So the next stage for me is reviewing every single frame of what's been filmed. And that's where discovery happens the third time, right? Or second time rather is, is wow, now I thought we'd filmed this, but actually um, there's this over here. And then I have to open up this second vision and turn in and transform it into a third vision for the film based on what's actually on the hard drive. So, so you're, is this like a daily process? So what I do, the fruit, my process is that once, if it's a really difficult project, I'll take a break before I go through this, yeah. just just for healing, you know, and, and some space away and fresh eyes. And usually that's about a month. And then once I re-engage, I re-engage whole hog. I re-engage fully and, and it, and I review every single frame. And as I do that, I create a spreadsheet. Mm -hmm. um, and for Hunger Ward, that spreadsheet was, I don't know, 1,500 lines long or something, mm -hmm. where it's basically log notes. And I, and I watch every scene, and I take notes, and I, I know really what we have. And once I've gone through that process that takes about a month, and I really know what we came back with, I create an outline for the film from that. And that's the third visioning, right? Um, that's usually completely different than my original vision for the film to some extent, right? But I have to stay open to that entire process um, or, or I'd be trying to create something that I can't really create. So I think if th that's, those are the three creations for me. That's so cool to, to know what we have, uh, just to lay it all out and to load it in into your mind. Yeah. Because like... This is the capture of reality we have. It's a very kind of scientific process too, because um, you know, in science you collect a bunch of data about a phenomena, yeah, and now you have to like analyze that data. But now your phenomena is long gone. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right, right. Now you just have the data, <laughs> just the yeah. data, and you have yeah. to uh, write a paper about it, like analyze the data. It's a similar thing. It is. You have to like load it all in. Where's the story? How? How? How do you? That last probably profound piece of doing the editing like in your mind like what uh how to lay those things out well it's almost like the scientific process right i have a hypothesis 
a creative hypothesis, right? Yeah, but, Not a scientific one. Yes. And, and but then I'm testing the hypothesis during the course of filming, right? And I have to stay true to what the data tells me in yes. the end, creatively. So it's very similar to the scientific processes. I don't know what we should we should probably coin that. Yeah, that's we, pretty that's creative pretty good. <laughs> scientific process or something like that. But then you actually do the edit and then you watch. That's also uh, iterative in a sense because maybe. Uh, when you have a film that's 20, 30, 40 minutes, or if it's feature length, uh, like it, and it, do, do you ever have it where it sucks? Like it's not. Is there at all, a stage where it sucks? <laughs> like a stage where, right, right. It, <laughs> right. Like is where it's like, no, this is not, this is not what I was imagining. Like when it's all put together in this way, this doesn't, this is not working right. This is not right. Or, or do you, is it always like an incremental step towards better and better? And it's better incremental. And better? Yeah, it's incremental. Yeah, and there's always some moment in the editing process where there's a breakthrough, where suddenly I understand how it fits together more fully. And you have to be, like you said, resilient. You have to be patient that that moment will come. Yeah, exactly. Are you ultra self-critical or are you generally optimistic and patient? I don't think those are mutually exclusive. Right, so you just oscillate, or you, or they're like dance partners or something. They're dance partners, yeah, yeah, definitely dancing you know, all the way through the process. <laughs>